it's really changed my view on what RevOps can do. And you can scale a process with Retool, you know, as uh, someone in RevOps, so, so much better than you can with a spreadsheet and a deck or, or whatever other sort of hacky tools exist. Welcome to our very first episode of Form the Table. My name is Kevin Donahoe. I'm one of the enterprise sales leads here at Retool, and we are doing this to showcase Retool from Retool. We see it as one of the most powerful ways to develop and build applications. And I'd say primarily the folks who are using Retool are engineers, more technical folks. The beauty of Retool is we also have some maybe less technical folks. And so as a way of showcasing some of the amazing apps that those folks are building, we we're launching a series to, to do just that, interview some internal Retool folks who've built some really astounding apps. And the very first person that we've wanted to bring on, really excited to welcome Adam. Adam, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and your role here at Retool? Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, so I'm Adam Sanko. I'm a strategy and operations manager at Retool. Day to day, what that means is I support our go-to-market leadership with planning, analytics, and process improvement across the org. And over the past year since I've been at Retool, I've been doing a lot of building with the tool to build applications for for our sales team, and I'm excited to to share that with everyone. Awesome. Yeah, Adam's built some really cool applications. And I think we'll probably have opportunities to dive into more of those. But today, I think what we're going to focus on are, are two applications that you built, the Pipeline Profit and the se Segment Splicer apps. Why don't you tell me a little bit about those and you know what they are? Yeah, definitely happy to. So the, the first app that I want to share with folks is called the Pipeline Profit. This app is a sales forecasting tool, and essentially what it is designed to do is it incorporates historical trend data to help sales reps and sales managers predict where they're going to land their quarter and assist them in their forecast call process. The second application is an app called Segment. It's actually Segment Slicer, but that app is a capacity planning app. So this is used by sales leadership and our finance team to help us figure out what is the right capacity for our sales team and how and where do we want to make changes in our sales structure in upcoming periods. And with that, we'll dive into the demo. This app is one that solves a very simple use case which is a question that every sales rep and manager asks, which is, I forecasting the realistic place where I'm going to land the work. So it's pretty simple. On this one page, a manager or a rep can see three lenses a forecast for themselves. In this case, it's Q2. Right now we're sitting in Q1, so this is the next quarter out, which is oftentimes opaque, unclear exactly where they're going to land. And so the profit helps them build a little confidence in calling a certain number. So for this anonymous sales manager, which also the numbers are scrambled, but for this manager, they have a quota of 1.5. They actually already won a big deal at the next quarter out worth 150K. So that's really nice for them. And so they have 1.1 remaining. Their last call was 1.3. Their one plus their weighted pipeline, which you can see down here, is 750K. And then really the magic is in this final cell here, which is the, the profit forecast, which is in this case 1.2. And it stacks these all next to each other so you can see sort of the different lenses of the forecast, as well as the pipeline by stage coverage, and then the specific deals that, that are involved here, as well as being able to link out to Salesforce. But really the magic in this app is the profit forecast, like I said. And what is embedded into that is really what makes this unique, which is a lot of data and history that is specific to that given person. So it takes into account multiple factors, the first of which is the rep's ACV. Like what is, you know, when I generate an opportunity, what is that uh, value going to be on average? As well as what is my pipeline generation rates look like for history? So over the course of a quarter, a rep is going to generate pipeline that is going to close in that quarter, but we don't have direct visibility to that. So we need to rely on the history to calculate that. Profit takes that into account. And then finally, where are my close rates? Not only just the win rate, but close rate by time, which is sort of a, a little bit more complicated of a metric to figure out because it's not only sales cycle, but also the win rate. And so all of that history and data that's specific again to that person or rep is embedded in that forecast. So it it provides a lot of confidence for the rep and the manager when they know that there's a number that's sort of like their benchmark based on the data. And oftentimes, like you see here, 
the rep <clears throat> tries to beat the profit. Um, in this case, the manager is calling 1.3 versus 1.2. The final thing that I want to share on the pipeline profit is that we can do this math also for the company level or at any level uh, because of the way the queries are set up on the back end. So in this case, it's looking at the entire company and sharing the different levels of forecast across the company, including our pipeline coverage, um, what the managers are calling in total, what the sales team is calling, as well as that same profit forecast. As mentioned, this app serves two primary functions. One is to allow us to plan the sales capacity needed to achieve the growth of each part of our business, and two, to allow leadership to interact with a complex model and make changes on top of live data in a way that is easy for them to update and allows the model to interact with live data. Let me show you what I mean. So there's a lot that's going on in the model, but let's start from the basic output that it's showing us. Last year, we did 32.2 million in new revenue, a new ARR, and currently the model is outputting 51.1, which achieves a growth of 19 million of ARR and 58% growth. And that includes 35 headcount compared to 28 last year, and efficiency per headcount of 1.4 million, which is 6x ROT. Now let's consider some changes that we want to make to the sales team in, in a couple of different ways. So for example, what if we wanted to change the way that we segment our business? For example, a lot of companies have a growth or small business segment that is under 100 employees, a mid-market segment that is under 1,000 employees or above 100, and an enterprise segment above a thousand. But what if we wanted to change that up? Let's consider some changes then to the model. So what if we wanted to change the way our company was segmented? A lot of companies have a small business segment that is below hundred employees, a mid market segment that goes up to a thousand employees and an enterprise segment that is a thousand and above. But what if, for example, we wanted to say, let's actually pull the enterprise segment down to 500 plus and shorten the mid market segment. What this app allows you to do is it's connected to live data, so it will, if you change that sub-segment to be enterprise, it'll update the model and show you by the new segments what, what does that ARR look like. And then from there, you can make subsequent changes, like what if we want to play around with the quota or the headcounts per, per segment here? You can then you know make adjustments and it will feed into the, the model and show you sort of the output Overall, the, the key benefit of this is that one, as I said before, it's connected to live data and it, it might be actually beneficial to show you exactly what that looks like. And it's, it's, it's not exactly that complicated, but I think Rachel makes it really easy for you to pull a query like you see here and the logic that I built connects to our database via some of the components here on the side that I was changing the segments on and it connects directly to the query so that when I am updating the segment lines, like for example, what I did with enterprise and market that changes that data directly from our database into this app and allows you to see to the output. So it makes it really easy for a leader to come in here and play around with the different scenarios of how the team can be structured, what would be required to get a certain level of growth. And it shows you all that output by, by the segments here, by sub segments, it will show you charts of, you know, the, the balance by, by different parts of the business. So there's a lot of information that makes it easily accessible for, for leaders to scenario plan and ultimately figure out what we want to do with the business next year. Awesome. So, you know, I think when you think about RevOps, right, there's a lot of places you can buy tools off the shelf. You can, you know, get this data, this information, you know, I would love to kind of understand a little bit more. What was the challenge that you were really focused on and how did you go about building and retool? Where, where were you getting the data? How were you collecting the information? Yeah, sounds good. So the, the challenge that we were trying to solve with the first application, the pipeline profit, was that sales reps were being asked or are, are being asked each week to provide a forecast call. But in certain cases, especially at the beginning of the quarter, there are a lot of deals that are sort of outside of the direct pipeline or not even in pipeline yet. And so it's hard to sort of forecast in the future for them. And so in many cases, it was a sort of finger in the wind forecast for, for a lot of reps. And what I created the pipeline profit to do was help them to estimate not only deals that were in their pipeline, but also give them a view into what we at Retool call creating close, which is deals that are not yet materialized in the pipeline, but are expected to from our marketing funnel. 
And so the pipeline profit really provides them with that estimate and ultimately gives them a call to check their own call against. It's sort of like a benchmark and a sanity check that helps them give confidence in, in what they're calling. So the second application that I demoed, the segment slicer, that really originated from in our planning process, it is often hard in spreadsheets to create a live updating model that is using live data from our Salesforce or your, whatever CRM you're using. It's often a pain to update that throughout the planning process, as well as it's hard for leadership to sort of engage with spreadsheets in many cases. So there's so many tabs and it's, it's a very confusing. And I think I've seen leaders get lost in, in spreadsheets. So what the segment slicer does is it sort of hides all the data behind the scenes and then creates one live updating model uh, that's an application and it provides a summary view that also has inputs that interact with the data behind the scenes that let leaders both you know, on the sales side and the finance side, you know, create scenarios of headcount, of quota, of et cetera, and model those things out live. You know, a little, little anecdotal story. When the pipeline profit was first launched, I was determined to beat the profit. And we had kind of our little a man against the machine first quarter. And to my regret and shame, the profit won. <laughs> and I think it's a testament to the tool that you built, but it's a very powerful thing. We'd love to you know, dive in a little bit more about what went into actually building that tool. Essentially, the guiding sort of philosophy I have is that I think simplicity is is best. And ultimately, what the rep and the manager are getting out of it is a single number. They want to know if their forecast is accurate or not, or is, is crazy, or they hit a way over or way under what the, what the data says. And so that is like front and center. So that's ultimately what I tried to provide. But there are sort of a slew of other features that are, are built as well using our data from Salesforce and some other, some other data sources as well. But what it provides the managers and our sales reps who are doing calls is really a piece of the mind and confidence in what they're doing. But at least they have something that sort of is a, a historically data-driven version of the forecasts that, that helps, you know, like I said, give them, give them confidence. Yeah, I can tell you as a sales leader and someone who's been in sales for, you know, over a decade now, having that sanity check, that compass, if you will, to give me guidelines on, you know, what, what our models say and, and what, you know, really custom built business logic is, is dictating is super helpful. It helps me know, okay, I'm way out of my depth or maybe I'm, I'm not seeing something that is there that, that I should be. So a great testament to you is as an end user, it's really fun to have that. You're building business apps. Is this something you've done before? Is this something you ever expected that you'd be doing? Great question. No, but I love it. And it, it's really changed my view on what RevOps can do and what sort of the archetypical like strategy and ops, business ops type persona can accomplish. I think typically, you know, the, the type of persona that, you know, occupies my role is good at spreadsheets, good at PowerPoint presentations, like all that stuff, but they only scale to a certain extent. And what you can do with Retool is so much more powerful and so much more professional and like really can, can scale. You can scale process with Retool, you know, as uh, someone in RevOps. So, so much better than you can with a spreadsheet and a deck or, or whatever other sort of hacky tools uh, exist. I also have a territory planning app, which, which helps the sales managers and sales management sort of chart out like what are the future books that people are going to look like. I have a forthcoming application on our AE and BDR pairings that's going to help those duos manage their book of business and strategize how they want to reach out to their target accounts, as well as a number of others. But those are just some top of my ones. We used it so heavily as we were building out our territories and books, and it was it was great to have kind of that single source. I mean, I've done that so many times in spreadsheets, and I've seen different tools off the shelf, but this was built for Retool and it had all that Retool specific language and logic. Well, thank you so much, Adam. This has been phenomenal. Thank you for walking us through. And yeah, I, you know, I think what I'd leave the audience with is, hey, this is approachable. It's something that you can use if you are in RevOps today. You don't have to be a SQL wizard. You don't have to know JavaScript. You can build apps to help power your business. Yeah, I just I just echo that. I think every tool, I wrote a post about this one, our AI feature came out in Retool that I think the, the combination of AI plus Retool is something that we didn't really talk about on this yet, but I maybe leave it in the last words that like it unlocks the potential to build. It's you know taught me a little bit of JavaScript, taught me more SQL than I knew before. 
and really unlocked the power to the applications that, that I built. So I think that is a really exciting thing for RevOps in, in the future.